This industrial media console is my favorite thing I've made so far. But I usually say that after each project. This time, I really mean it though. Well, at least for now. Check it out. The frame for this console is made entirely out of 12 gauge angle iron, mostly one and a half inch angle iron with two inch angle for the vertical supports. And here I'm cutting the angle iron for the top and bottom frames of the console, which are both identical. My friend Richard from 42 Fab came by to give me some tips and because of him, I feel like my welding really took a step forward with this project. So thanks Richard and make sure you guys check out his channel linked down below. We use the bandsaw to cut all the 45 degree angles on the angle iron, and I feel like I get a better fitting miter cut this way. Next, we made sure the first frame was perfectly square before tacking and welding up all these joints. After building the first frame, we could build the second frame right on top of it, knowing it would be square and line up perfectly. And here Richard is grinding down and rounding off the corners so they'll fit within the vertical support angle iron, which I cut next. These get welded from the underside, first to the top frame and then the bottom frame, creating the outer skeleton of the entire piece. Now I can build these four frames. The top two create the aprons and the bottom two frames create the top two shelves. And again, to get the most accurate joints that I can, I like to cut these on my bandsaw. After getting the first frame square, I tacked and welded it together. And then this becomes my template for the other three frames, which I tacked on top of that first frame and then welded them separately. To get consistent spacing on both sides, I made these spacer blocks out of some scrap two by fours, and these hold the frames in place so I could tack weld one end. Next, I added the vertical supports for the center of the console, and then I could weld the other side of the shelf frames in place to the vertical supports. The bottom shelf sits inside the lower frame, but I had to add a cross support like so, and then I had to notch out the ends so it would sit down within the frame. Moving on to the doors, these are made with one inch square tube. After cutting the frames, I welded them together and then I could move on to building a jig that would bend the quarter inch steel rod I'm using to create a tree pattern within the door frames. Now this is a steel spike I found at Home Depot for just a few bucks and I used this to build my bending jig. Each frame will contain one half of the tree on either side, and each one of these is made from five pieces of this quarter inch steel rod. I started by bending the roots and working my way from the outside in as I bent the branches into a tree shape one by one. With the first side of the tree complete, it could serve as a template for the second side. I intentionally made the other side just a little bit uneven because I didn't want it perfectly symmetrical. With both sides of the tree done, I could line up the bottom and then start welding them together piece by piece. I intentionally left the branches too long so I could trim them to their exact length at the end so they would fit down within the frame. I used the scrap from cutting the branches to add a few more limbs, and then I welded the trees with an eighth inch offset into the door frame. To make the tree pattern stand out, I'm adding expanded steel mesh to the back side of the doors, which I cut to fit and welded in place. 
With the doors finished, I moved on to the woodworking portion of this project. The wood I'm using is reclaimed oak cargo flooring that came from semi-truck trailers. The wood has a bunch of character from the bolt holes and the drag marks in it, and it's basically just a large prefab oak butcher block. In the trailers, they use half laps to join these planks together, but I ripped these off and joined them together with dominoes. Also, if you like my videos, I really encourage you to hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out and I truly appreciate it. Between the tabletop, the shelves, and the center cabinet, there's a lot of wood in this console. So I made all of these panels here and it still wasn't enough. Once the glue was dry, I could address all the bolt holes from where the planks were attached to the floors of the semi-trailers. I drilled these out with a half inch bit from my doweling jig and then filled the holes with oak dowels. I used an angle grinder with a flat disc attached to sand down these panels and remove all the varnish and grime. The longer panel is for the shelf that goes on the top of the console and here I'm ripping it to width and then I cut down the ends to length with my track saw. This next panel is for the four shelves and after cutting them to their final dimensions, I had to go back and cut them in half so that they would fit down into the frame. The rest of the panels are to build out the interior of the cabinet starting with the back panel which was followed by the bottom shelf. I was able to cut the bottom shelf to length in the miter saw but it was too wide to cut it all in one pass so I just flipped it over and finished the cut. With the sides cut to length, I needed to add a dado to accept the middle shelf. Now the dado is a half inch deep and I cut it in three passes creeping up on the final width. With the center shelf in place, I could set aside the woodworking and trim out the console with the steel mesh. This expanded steel mesh cuts very easy with an angle grinder and a cutoff disc. So I cut the mesh to fit down into the sides and the back on each end, and then I tack welded all of these in place. I also added steel mesh to the front and back aprons on either end. For the wood inserts in the apron, I decided to add an oak leaf detail using my x car from Inventables. I modeled the oak leaf pattern in Inventables free software easel. The software is very intuitive and easy to learn. I just did an image trace of an oak leaf drawing and then arranged them in a pattern I thought would enhance the look of the console. For me, having a CNC isn't about doing completely digital fabrication projects. It's more about having another tool in my shop that aids in the overall design of a piece. Back to the metal frame, I could weld in the back apron piece, which helps support the back panel of the cabinet. This one actually gets welded facing the opposite direction as the others. Many of the pieces I've seen using cargo flooring have a similar dark brown stain. While I like that look, I wanted to do something a little different to help bring out the modern industrial look that I'm going for. I used a propane torch to show Sugiban the panels, and oak is a great wood to use for this process.
After torching, I sanded the panels with 120 grit sandpaper to remove most of that top layer of the wood that was charred. I used a wire wheel on my drill to clean the rust off the frame without stripping it totally clean. I added a few coats of spray lacquer as a finish and to prevent any further rust. I was trying to come up with some elaborate idea for the door handles, but I settled on something much more simple that doesn't take away from the main feature of this console, which is that tree within the doors. I bent this half inch flat bar steel, cut it to size, and then welded them in place. Before adding casters, I had to weld on some flat bars to the corners so that the casters would be totally supported. I wanted sort of a vintage look for the casters, but those can be really expensive, so I decided to make my own set with the zinc plated casters I got online. I took them apart first and then painted the wheels black. Then I ground off all the zinc plating before welding them to the underside of the frame. I also wore a respirator while I was welding just in case I was welding through any leftover zinc. To finish the wood, I'm using Maker Brand Simple Finish with a wax sealer which will lock in any charred soot that remains on the surface of the wood. I did two coats and then wiped down the excess. To allow space for the front apron to be welded into place, I had to notch out the sides of the cabinet with my Cat's Moses dovetail jig. Not at all what this is intended for, but it worked great for this application. I drilled and countersunk a few holes to attach the sides of the cabinet to the center shelf with a couple screws. Now these screws will be covered up by the frame and you won't see them. To assemble the cabinet, I started with the back and the bottom panels and then I could slide the whole side and shelf assembly into place. I attached everything to the back panel with a couple screws that I later covered up with dowels. Now I could weld on the very last piece of the frame, which is this front apron support, and this effectively locks the cabinet structure in place within the frame. Then I use these 12 gauge scraps to offset the doors from the cabinet. I'm using some weld on barrel hinges for the doors, and I made sure these were perfectly aligned with the straight edge before welding them in place. And now I'm cutting those wood apron inserts to fit within the frame and I drilled holes in the top of the frame so I could secure them with screws. The very last thing to do was put the shelves in place followed by the tabletop and this tree media console was finished. <laughs> 